This is KiCad 7, and today we are graduating from basic operations to intermediate. In doing so, we're going to cover no connect, junction dots, local labels, a new feature called net directive, and global labels. Recently in part 4, we learned how to use the most basic operations, starting with the initial 5 on the right hand side. Effectively, you are ready for this video if you already use them all. First off, we're doing things a little bit differently today because I have already created a new project and I've drawn the entire circuit. But as you can kind of tell, this design has wires all over the place and it's tough to sort out exactly what's going on. That's because I haven't labeled anything, so the remainder of this video will be dedicated to cleaning up this design. In order to follow along, you can pause the video or you can locate this screenshot by going to unboxing-tomorrow.com and searching for KiCad Part 6. On the right-handed toolbar, let's start with the simplest intermediate tool, which is the No Connect. So one problem with this drawing is if you zoom in on these microcontroller pins, you're going to see some tiny circles on every pin that's left unconnected. You can think of this as an error catching feature because when we do an automated check later, every unconnected pin will throw a warning. But if we go to the right side, select the no connect, and then click on these pins one by one, we are effectively telling the KiCad engine that these unconnected pins are exactly what we want. Next on the right hand side we have the junction dot. When two wires are first connected, KiCad 7 will draw these automatically. But on this drawing I've made a mistake, and these two wires here need to connect to each other. So this is a rare case where I need to do it manually. We already covered power ports in part 4, and we saw that when you connect a wire to them, the wire itself will take on the power port's pin name. If I go to the microcontroller and I click on the wire under pin 8, we can see that KiCad has already assigned a systematic name to it. But let's simplify the design by going over to the power port icon, waiting for the results to load, selecting GND for ground, and then let's connect that ground to pin 8. For good measure, I'll do the same for capacitor C1, diode D1, capacitor C2 and C3, connector J1, connector J2, diode D2, I'm going to trim away the excess wiring, and then finally after all that, if I go to the right side at toolbar and activate the net highlight feature, I can click on any ground and they're all going to be connected even though there's no wiring between them. This is because in KiCad 7, every power port is specifically designed to behave as a global label. And because of that feature, I will do the same for the positive voltage rail. While I'm doing that in the background, let's look at how KiCad 7 distinguishes global labels from local labels. In this schematic so far, the ground and 3v3 symbols will overwrite the names of any wires they come across. But if we want to assign our own spontaneous names to a wire, then you'll need to use a label. To use the version that only affects the current page, we can go to the right side of toolbar, click the label icon, or press the letter L as in label. When we do that, the labels properties window will appear, and at this point we have a choice. We can simply type in the name we want, or on the right side of that text box, you can look for a drop down arrow, and this will give you a list of any other labels on the page. Just as an example, I'm going to call this one cable underscore two underscore MCU. Plant the label down on a wire, and let's do it again by pressing L, and this time the name I want is MCU underscore two underscore cable. So now that these two wires have labels on them, if we want to label them a second time, simply mouse over the wire, press the letter L as in label, and now the label is basically pre-written. So once again I'm going to go in the background and reorganize things by adding labels. The point of doing all this is sort of like adding comments to source code. Other people, including our future selves, will need to know what these wires are for. And when we do the board layout later, any labels or net names will be printed on the copper traces so we can keep track of everything. Personally, I like to distinguish inputs from outputs, and if I have an analog signal, usually I will label it analog just to remind myself not to route it next to anything noisy. So let's continue doing a little bit more cleanup, and you can see here that without too much effort, now everything is organized by partitioning. So now we have associated the majority of these wires with names like output LED, reset, and a few others. But if you think about it, ultimately there are only two types of signals here. So we have the two power nets, which are ground and 3v3, and really everything else is just a generic signal carrier. 
If we click on any random wire, at the bottom left corner of the screen, you can check the wire's resolve net class. Right now everything is set to default, but optionally it would be wise to assign these two power nets of ground and 3v3 to some other classification. That way when it's time to do the PCB layout, we can ask KiCad to automatically assign a different set of rules. For example, we might want to automatically have it make these traces wider, but let's worry about that later. For now, I want these two nets in a different class, and the KiCad team has given us a new tool for this, called the Net Directive, or Net Class Directive. On the right side at toolbar, we can use one now, but it won't do us a whole lot of good. When the window appears, we can click on the drop-down menu, but all we have right now is that default class. Let's close this window and create a new one by going to the top left corner of the screen, and you will see an icon called Edit Schematic Setup. It's the same one we saw in Part 3. Click on the icon, and when it loads, navigate down to Project Net Classes. We can see that the default net class is already here, so I'm going to click on the plus sign, and this will create a new row in the table. In the name cell for that new row, I'm going to type in the word power, and press enter. Now at this point I think I also want the wires of this new net class to be a different color from the original. So click the color cell, and then drag the target until you see a color you want to use. Press OK, and now that we have our new power class, we can press OK on the schematic setup window, and we're back to the schematic. On the right side of toolbar, click the net class directive once more, and in the dialog window, go to the value cell, and use the drop down arrow on the right hand side. Click the arrow, and we can now select the new power class we just created. Click OK, and the net class directive should be attached to your cursor. At this point, any wire we attach it to will be designated as a power net. So I will do that now, and then let's copy paste to make an additional one, and we'll do the same for the ground net. Now, I've mentioned these local labels only affect the current page, and the global labels affect the entire project. Global labels are convenient, but much like global variables in computer programming, you can accidentally cause naming conflicts in other pages, especially if someone else is working on the other page. Buses in KiCad 7 are heavily dependent on labels, and because they're a bit counterintuitive, the entirety of the next video will only focus on buses and labeling.